guys, uh, it's Stay Here. You might not recognize me. <laughs> I know it's been a year. We hit a thousand subscribers, which is amazing. Like, what the hell, guys? Ten minutes about White Street Frogs got like almost 13,000 views, which is, um, oh my god. Like I said, a few things have changed. I am now 20 years old. Uh, I shaved my head last January, um, so my hair is, is growing back and it's kind of moldy. I now have this beautiful wall that has all of y'all's artwork on it. So everything you guys have ever made is up on this wall. Oh, this. <laughs> we have upgraded. We have technology. Also, I have a ring light now. And a lot of grease marks on my on my thing. But anyways, <laughs> I have all my notes on here. Another thing that I have upgraded is um, I now have a script. We're gonna be talking about pretty much anything under the sun that kind of goes in medical care slash at-home treatment for white street frogs. It's gonna be more of a serious video because this stuff is pretty serious. I'm gonna give some tutorials. I'm gonna kind of sound like a person giving a lecture <laughs> for a little bit. Um, I promise I'll mix it up and make it fun because I know literally everyone is doing online lectures right now. You don't wanna sit through another one, so I promise I will try to make this as interesting as I possibly can. I don't have a frog on me right now, just because this is going to be a longer video. We're just gonna chill out, you and me, and when I need to insert frog, I will put a frog. So just a disclaimer really quick, I just need to let y'all know that all of these treatments are not replacement for vet care. Obviously, if they work, that's great, but if they don't, you need to contact a vet. Um, they're pretty easy to find. Typically, if you just search exotic vet and then your area, a lot of vets don't advertise that they have an exotic vet, like outright, but they put it on their website or in their biographies. So none of these are a replacement for vets. You should still have a vet around for dire emergencies and a yearly checkup. There's a lot of stuff that's hard to diagnose with frog and only really trained eyes or someone who's been working with frogs for a long time can see. All the tips and tricks I'm going to tell you today save you money and gas and time. You might have to go to the store and get a few things. We're going to be going over mostly white tree frogs things. A lot of these are kind of universally used between different species of frogs, but every frog is different. So if you are confused, please consult a vet first. It is free to call a vet and ask. I am not a licensed or registered vet. I don't have a degree in veterinary science at all. <laughs> I am just someone who has spent four years in the community of rescuing um, and helping frogs. I learned a lot of this just over my years. We're gonna start off with things that I think every frog owner should keep handy. So when you're making your supplies list, these are things that you should definitely put on there. So number one is flavorless Pedialyte. This is something I think everyone should have when your frog's being kind of sluggish and you don't really know what's going on. This is something super simple and it can't harm your frog as long as you're doing it right. Pedialyte is typically found in the cold and sinus area. The flavorless Pedialyte typically is there. Sometimes they put it in the baby section though. So I do know Walgreens and Walmart and Target keep their Pedialyte in the baby section. As long as it's flavorless, that's the most important. Basically what Pedialyte is, is a electrolyte solution. It is often where frogs just sometimes stop eating. Whether it is too cold in the tank, the humidity is off, males will sometimes go off in around mating season. Sometimes there is no reason and they just get picky, which is why it's good to have a variety of foods. But if they're going months upon months without eating, you should never panic, you know, your frog's gonna be okay. Uh, just make sure that if it continues on into a full month that you are contacting a vet. Here is uh, the clip and voiceover that'll show you the tutorial. All right, so Pedia bath is pretty simple. Uh, what you're gonna need is your electrolyte solution. I'm using Walgreens Unflavored, it's no name brand. You're gonna get yourself some warm water. And then I put a cap full in, but you can do half and half, whatever you feel is right. Stir that up, put your froggy in it. Then you're gonna cover that up and leave them for like 10 to 30 minutes. You can decide however is best. 
then you're just gonna give them a plain warm water bath without any Pedialyte. And that's basically it. I hope that was good. Let's jump into number two. The second most important thing to have just anywhere in your house, I mean, you probably have one already. Most people do in a first aid kit, and that is a triple antibacterial ointment. And what I mean by this is Neosporin, Polysporin, um, Bactricerin used to be uh, a big one, but they put lidocaine in their new mixtures, which is a pain reliever. But for frogs, lidocaine can cause nerve damage. So you wanna make sure you're staying away from anything with lidocaine. Same with aloe. Just make sure you look to see that there's no anti-itch, anti-redness. It's very, very important that you just get plain neosporin, plain polysporin, or a no-name brand triple antibacterial. Frogs get wounds, you know, they're very clumsy. As long as a wound isn't anything too intense, like a broken limb, any deep, deep gashes that, you know, you can see bone or anything like that, always consult a vet for those. But if it's just a tiny scratch on the face or back, you never want to put it on their stomach, especially down on their um, pelvic area. What antibacterial ointments do is uh, they're kind of like greasy um, and that is meant to block off any water or moisture from getting into the wound so that's why you never want to put it on the stomach just because you do not want to block absorption of water that is their most vital organ their skin so um, only on the back or head if it's just a light scratch you can totally do this um, I've done it multiple times and it works pretty well all right, so this is super simple. We're gonna take our triple antibiotic or antibacterial. This one's just a no-name brand. You're gonna grab yourself a Q-tip and put just a little bit on there. Rub it onto the spot gently and that's it. Okay, we're gonna move on to number three. That's four, three, which is having an extra bin or tank set aside for quarantine. This is just a given for any frog owner. You should always have an extra tank or bin laying around for quarantine. There is a requirement when you get a new frog to quarantine it for 90 days. If you already have a frog in a setup tank, whether it's bioactive, whether it's just paper towel or frog foam or whatever you use on the bottom, you do need to set aside your new frog and allow them a 90 day quarantine period before you put them anywhere near each other. I'll show you how to put together a quarantine tank here. All right, again, this is super simple. You're gonna wanna have a bin, poke some holes in it. Hopefully yours will be a lot cleaner than mine. Put some paper towel in there, however much you need. I like to double up on it. Grab a little hide and a water bowl. That's all you need, super simple. Put your froggy in there and then wait however long you need to wait. That's it. Quarantine times uh, will depend if it's something like an illness, it could be a couple weeks. You can kind of judge it how you feel. If you're working with a vet, they'll typically tell you. Quarantine just makes it a lot easier to monitor the frog. If there's parasites that are exiting the body, you'll know which frog it's coming from. Mites, uh, bacterial infection, anything like that, you have them on those white paper towels. Another great thing about paper towels is they're disposable. So you're not gonna be reusing anything. Clean and sterile is very important, especially if your frog has open wounds or infection. That's the only way to fight it is to keep things very clean. Those are just some basic things that I think every frog owner should have on hand. If you don't have a frog yet, it's best to make sure that you have these things before you get them and know how to use them. So I hope those tutorials helped. A lot of those things should be used side by side with vet treatment. In this section, I'm gonna show you some first aid tricks as well as just explain different diseases, how to find them, ways to monitor them. And just a quick trigger warning, we are going to be discussing medical, science-y things, so there will be diagrams and photos of frogs with the diseases. I'm not gonna put in anything too gruesome, but if you do wanna skip over the diagrams and photos, I will put timestamps below for you to skip to right before I put the picture on. Let's begin. In this section, we're gonna be talking about CPR. Um, or mouth to mouth. One thing I do want to say is that CPR is for dire emergencies only. Um, you need to make sure that the frog is not breathing, is not responding. You can typically tell, you know, a frog is kind of limp, uh, their eyes begin to fog over. I'm gonna kind of be like a kindergarten teacher for this one, so um, I might baby you a little bit. This is Todrick. <laughs> Todrick here is my little puppet. I would love to show you guys how to properly do this on a real frog, but unfortunately, uh, 
you do have to kind of put them on their back. I don't want to put any of my frogs through that stress, especially when they're not dying. Like I said, this is only for emergencies. So, uh, Toadrick is gonna help us out. He's like the perfect size for a frog dummy. I got him from Goodwill. I think he's from Ikea. So if you've never seen a diagram of a frog, this is what it looks like. You can see their lungs are right in between their two arms, and then they have all their digestive tract down by their bum. Looking at this on a almost anatomically correct frog, we can place the lungs in between the two arms. You're gonna find the spot right there. So my pal Todrick here has been having stress issues. He's really stressed and I'm not too sure what to do. And all of a sudden he stops breathing. You can see he stops breathing. We're in the middle of a soak. He could possibly drown, so I am taking him out. You can either hold like this or down like this. Um, the important thing is you don't want the frog completely on its back. Frogs cannot breathe on their backs like this. That's not how their respiratory system works. You're going to place him at like a 45 degree angle, I guess. Typically, you would be doing it like this, but just so I can show you guys, I'm gonna be more up like this and kind of holding him weirdly. But you're gonna find the spot between his two arms and kind of in the middle, high up belly. And what you want to do is take your thumb and find that spot. This part, you want to be very, very gentle because you can crush a frog. Just like a human, we're gonna do chest compressions. Um, I'm pretty sure that's kind of universal throughout all animals. <laughs> you don't wanna be going one, two, three, four, right? You can see how his body is like being crushed. Just want firm, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now we're gonna go to mouth to mouth. <laughs> And this is the fun part. I do want to put a disclaimer. Please do not go around doing mouth to mouth to random frogs that you find outside. There's possible salmonella. Um, I know, you know, we all, when we see an animal struggling, we want to help stick with chest compressions. Um, and if that doesn't work, you know, unfortunately you may have to let the frog go as sad as that is. I would much rather you not going to the hospital than for you to catch something uh, from giving mouth to mouth to a random frog. <laughs> Stick to your pets, you know. You're monitoring them, you know what they come in contact with, you know what they last ate, okay? I just wanna make sure that's clear. Don't go around kissing frogs, I promise they will not turn into a prince. Toadrick's already a prince, so. What more do you need? Right? <laughs> All right, so mouth to mouth, you're going to open the mouth, um, and the easiest way to do this is to take a credit card or business card that's clean, gently pry the mouth open with it, and then have something you can wedge in there to keep it open. Typically, if the frog is very limp, it may stay open. You want to locate the nostrils, open your mouth, and put it around the nostrils, like, like that. <laughs> that looks so weird. But basically, you want to make sure you're covering the nostrils and the mouth all together, it's gonna look like this. One, two, three, four, blow. So, it's super simple, it'll look weird, but if you're in a dire situation and you don't know what to do, um, sometimes mouth to mouth and CPR is just something that happens. <laughs> it's happened multiple times for me, so um, yeah. Don't feel ashamed that you're doing mouth to mouth on a frog, you could save its life, um, but remember, no wild frogs. Wouldn't be the first time I've embarrassed myself on the internet, but um, it's definitely up there. Anyways, uh, let's move on. <laughs> so the next thing we're gonna be going over is force feeding. Again, this is another one of those dire emergency things. It shouldn't be the first thing that you go to. Um, you know, obviously if something happens, it's been a couple months since your frog has eaten, and uh, you know, you've tried everything. Force feeding may be the next step for you. Uh, you'll just have to gauge it yourself. Of course, if a vet tells you that force feeding is needed, um, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Everyone has different ways of force feeding. Um, this is the way that I learned. This is a two-person job, so you will need a helping hand. 
So you've got your business card. One person is going to hold the frog and insert the business card into the frog's mouth so it opens. The other person will be holding some tongs and a bug and as soon as that mouth opens, pop that bug in there kind of far back and the frog should swallow. Also, here's Orby getting a treat. Well, one thing to kind of keep in mind is just to stay calm, be gentle, and work fast. There are other things that you can force feed other than bugs. There's things like critical care, which is more of a liquid diet. Force feeding is a little bit different for critical care because it comes with a syringe. But the business card way pretty much works uh, almost every time. <laughs> there are a few stubborn frogs, but um, you just have to try and try again and eventually you'll get it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is honey soaks. Typically for constipated frogs, uh, you'll want to start with a warm bath first, see if that helps, get a little Pedialyte in there, um, see if that just energizes them a little bit so that they go to the bathroom, but if it's been like a month and they haven't gone to the bathroom and you don't know what to do and you've tried warm soaks for hours on end and they're just not, uh, you can use a honey soak. I really only use this on Pac-Man frogs, they tend to get constipated really easily. I'm not sure why. I think just their bodies are so compact and they eat so much. The fact that they're on dirt and people keep them with moss and wood chips and different things doesn't help either. Pac-Man frogs just tend to get impacted really easily. But this should work for most frogs. You just have to be careful because honey can dry out the skin. Um, in the tutorial, I'll show you a way to avoid that. Um, so let's just get into that. All right, so this is super simple. You're gonna get a container and some normal honey with no additives. Yep, just normal honey. And then get yourself some warm water. It should be a little bit warmer than room temp, not hot at all. Then take a drop of honey. That's honestly a little bit too much. Stir that in there. It'll melt easier in the warm water. And then you're gonna pop your frog in for about 10 to 30 minutes and make sure you're massaging the tummy down to the bum. And then you're going to make sure you give them a normal room temp soak. And yeah, that, that's it. They should poop. I hope that was helpful. And we're gonna move on to bacterial infections. So bacterial infections come in many forms. You can get a bacterial respiratory infection. You can get a bacterial infection in wounds, just on the stomach from irritation. One thing that is common throughout though is speckling. Here you can see a red-eyed tree frog, all the speckling down his back. The speckling is how it appears on most frogs. There can be a few larger speckles or splotches or, you know, rampant speckling all down the back. And frogs can get irritated easily on their belly. Sometimes they'll be red from just wandering around um, and rubbing up against, you know, the frog foam, whatever you have. Certain decorations can irritate them. So you may see one or two just stress spots. Um, but note that those will go away. What you're really looking for is the bright green speckling all down your frog's back. It seems to happen more with tree frogs rather than toads or any burrowing frogs like Pac-Man's. Bright red tummy is pretty obviously a bacterial infection. Things like stress spots are nothing to panic over. Any slightly pink on the tummy is typically normal. It's just from them rubbing up on things. Uh, you can give them a warm soak and that should take care of it. So how do frogs get bacterial infections? Well, it's typically one of two things. One, the tank is just dirty. Tummy is super, super irritated because they've just been stepping in poop the whole time. Just a dirty tank that has not been cleaned in weeks can cause a bacterial infection. The biggest one though, which seems to be a common theme, is dirty, standing, excess, water. The water bowl hasn't been changed in weeks. Uh, even if you put new water in there to fill it up, there's still a bunch of debris in there, shedded skin, pee, poop. Standing water can be a big thing if you haven't changed the paper towels in a while or washed the frog foam. Another big one is excess water or moisture within the soil, which is why I personally don't like eco where Soils hide a lot of moisture because they don't really get soupy until it's like way too much moisture. And a lot of it just sits in the soil, which becomes a breeding ground for bacteria. It's extremely important that you are cleaning your water bowl 
every other day to every day. Depending on how dirty things are, I have to clean my water bowls pretty much every day. Community tanks, you need to change water bowls a lot. Scrubbing it down, making sure I get all the shed, all the poop, everything out. Drying it completely with a paper towel and then filling it up with clean dechlorinated water And I do that pretty much every night if it's not extremely dirty You know, there's not a lot of poop in it then I will leave it and do it the next day That's perfectly fine But if it's extremely dirty like the frogs had a crazy night or they just ate that night And I see it in the morning and it's really gross because frogs typically poop after they eat uh, Then I will go and change it. So it just kind of depends um, on how messy your frog is, but you have to make sure that you are changing it at least every other day. There is one at-home treatment that you can do and seems to work most of the time, obviously with severe things like red leg, probably won't work and you need to go see a vet. We're going to talk about the Melafix treatment. Um, and I will show you that in a tutorial. I personally don't have Melifix right now. I just have the Reptisafe, which is blue and it kind of looks like Melifix. So I'm just gonna be using that. Just pretend that it's Melifix and um, we'll get over to the tutorial. All right, pay attention because Melifix can do a lot of harm if you use too much. You're gonna take your Melifix and do not use a syringe like I did. You're actually gonna take a toothpick, dip that into the Melifix and then put that in your water. That's all you need. Soak for five minutes in the Melifix and then do a 15 minute soak with normal water. You have to do this every time. And you're gonna do that for a week until the redness goes away. Please, please, please make sure you're doing a normal soak after. And that's it. Frog Club was able to give me the proper dosage and then the toothpick trick and all that. So go check out at frog.club on Instagram. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is parasites. I promise I'll be really quick with this one because it is so gross. I'm not having any images um, just because they are so disgusting. But I will be describing things, so I hope that makes up for it. Different parasites affect frogs in different ways, of course, but there's a few consistencies with a lot of them. So obviously if you're seeing any worms, eggs, larvae, anything like that within poop, they're pretty obvious. Typically there's like white eggs or white worms. Owning a frog, sometimes you may have to go through poop. It's not fun. Their poop kind of stinks. It's not terrible. It's more of like an ammonia smell. A common parasite pinworms, that is what Houdini had. They're very, very aggressive. Another common thing with pinworms is that they exit through the legs. It's not always through the legs. Um, you know, it can be through different parts in the body, but for some reason they like coming out of the legs and they do exit the frog's body and die. They can move all around the body. So if your frog is getting massive lumps on their legs and then they pop and these disgusting white bo booger looking things come out, that is a parasite, possible pinworm, and you need to go to a vet. There is no over-the-counter treatment for parasites for frogs. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is edema or edema. I call it edema just because edema Sounds like um, another medical treatment. Another name for it is dropsy. And you might have heard that for fish um, because it is a very common illness for fish, but it can actually affect frogs. Not just aquatic frogs, it does seem to affect aquatic frogs a lot more, but it is possible to affect tree frogs, burrowing frogs. It's not quite understood in the scientific community yet. There are people still looking into it. But basically what it is, is a buildup of fluid within the frog that causes pressure on the organs. And if you want something more scientific, um, here is a definition from the sprucepets.com. It is lymph, the fluid substance that circulates in the lymphatic system fills the lymph nodes and does not drain properly. It builds up outside the normal tissues it usually stays in and fills the abdominal cavity of a frog, thus causing the edema. Edema is more the effect that happens when the lymph fluid puts pressure on the frog's organs. It's the same for fish, and basically there is no at-home treatment. There are multiple ones for fish, but they're, they haven't been tested on frogs. So the only way to treat edema is to go to a vet. The vet will then drain the fluid, and releasing that fluid is going to remove the pressure off the organs. 
that will help the frog hopefully recover. So if your frog is experiencing extreme bloat, it could be edema and you need to go consult a vet. Edema gets bad really quickly. It's a buildup of fluids. And so if your frog is sitting in water, they're taking in more fluids. So that puts more pressure onto the organs and it's kind of gruesome, but what can happen is an organ can pop or be crushed. It's, it's all this pressure that's being built up by the lymph fluid. So it is important to get your frog to a vet if you are noticing extreme bloat. Your frogs can get bloated for a couple different reasons, but typically it's kind of like a water bloat. Like sometimes if they've been sitting in water for a long time and they have all this water built up in their system and they need to pee or just shoot it because frogs collect water in order to just use as a defense mechanism. That's okay, just monitor it. You know, they probably just have to pee. Typical bloat will stay in the stomach area. While edema, the fluid travels throughout the body. So their arms will be bloated, their legs are gonna be bloated. There is a big difference and you will be able to see it, I promise. The next thing we are going to talk about is MBD. It stands for metabolic bone disease. And metabolic is a big word. I know sometimes I have trouble even saying it. <laughs> I'm gonna simplify it for you. Basically, it's a skeletal deformity caused by the lack of vitamin D, calcium, or phosphorus. So vitamin D3 is very important for all living things. Animals in the wild can get it from the sun. What vitamin D3 does for reptiles and amphibians is controls the absorption of calcium and phosphorus. And MBD happens when there's an imbalance of those three and it affects the bones and cartilage of reptiles and amphibians. It's what happens when you don't provide calcium, including D3 or UVB. But trust me when I say that getting a UVB bulb is a lot cheaper than dealing with MBD. How do you prevent this from happening? Basically just providing calcium with D3 and calcium without D3 and UVB. And why you have to provide with and without, you don't want to provide too much D3 because then again, you will have an imbalance. The good thing is MBD can be treated. Things like a mouth hanging open or a crooked spine, interesting ways of walking, those are going to be forever. Another thing about MBD is it's extremely painful because your bones are deteriorating. How it affects the frogs is their bones go floppy. To move, we need to use our bones, right? Animals do it, humans do it. I sound like Bill Nye the Science Guy, but <laughs> it's important. We need our bones. Bones are good. Everyone has bones. A great example of this is our newest rescue. She's kind of become my logo. I love her so much, is Sweet Pea. I'll put up some footage here of her walking around. You can see her spine is kind of curved and her mouth hangs open and she walks a little weird. She was given a second chance and now she's healing. She's doing great. Now she's climbing everywhere. She gets in her bath perfectly fine. She jumps around. She literally bounces off the walls. She still can't climb the glass like other frogs, but she's doing so good. Moral of the story is if you notice that your pet may have some symptoms of MBD, don't feel guilty and try to hide it. Please go to a vet or a rescue and get some help. The first step is getting UVB and providing calcium. It seems like a lot of work, but trust me, it's worth it. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is a fungal infection slash chytrid. The scientific name is chytridiomycosis, but we use chytrid because as the old saying goes, ain't nobody got time for that. So chytrid is a fungal disease currently affecting millions of species of frogs all over the world. It's destroyed a massive amount of ecosystems and caused species to go extinct or almost become extinct. I've been reading, and that's a rare statement, but this book is really good, um, by Robin Moore. It's called In Search of Lost Frogs, and it's all about scientists' discovery of chytrid and trying to find these species who are going to extinct. I'm halfway, but it's based on a true story, and it's really good. I highly recommend going and checking it out. But the fact that chytrid affects wild frogs, it seems so far away from our pets. You can't really get any species of toad captive bred. People just don't breed toads in captivity. If you buy a toad at an expo, they almost 
100% were wild caught. It's extremely possible for you to own a frog with the disease already. The fungus attacks the frog's whole system. There's a lot of different symptoms for it because it affects so many different parts of the frog. The basics are random wounds, skin peeling, welts, redness, starving themselves, and honestly so much more. So chytrid is still being researched. We don't know everything about it yet. It's gotten a lot better and we've done a lot of research, but obviously we're nowhere near an over-the-counter treatment. There are fungal treatments, but chytrid is such a big, mean disease that works so fast, it's best to just get them straight to a vet. So if you're seeing any form of chytrid or you're just not sure, get them to a vet and have them do a fungal swab. There are some treatments, um, they're not 100% guaranteed to work of course since we are still researching into it so just be aware that it's going to be a long road and things might not work out how you want some people talk about salt soaks but they can be extremely harmful if not done right so they are not recommended without vet assistance or instruction if you're interested in helping the fight against chytrid and other things that are plaguing frogs around the world I'll put a link in the description to savethefrogs.com. You can go and donate there and check out their story. That's it. We got through it. I don't know how long this video is, but it's probably going to be a little long. A reminder, before you get a frog, please make sure that you do have an exotic vet that you can go to in case of emergencies. Aside from emergencies, you should just go get your frog checked out yearly anyway. I hope this was informative. Um, I promise I'm going to be getting back into videos. I have two other videos scripted and I already have the thumbnails made up. I'm really going to try. Thank you so much again for a thousand subscribers, that's absolutely amazing. Um, my White Street Frogs myth video blew up and I think that's just because White Street Frogs have been very popular lately um, and a lot of people are looking to get some. So I hope this helps anyone who's a new frog owner or is looking to get a frog. If you need to reach me for anything or if you had more questions or comments on this, uh, you can go and join our Discord server, it'll be down below. Or you can reach me at Facebook or Instagram. I'm also on YouNow where I stream in both on YouNow and YouTube Wednesdays and Fridays at 7.30pm Central Time. And yeah, once again, our Discord server, it's brand new, um, so we're just waiting for people to come in. It's all about frogs. I think it's a pretty great place to hang out, so if you want to join our Discord, it's in the link below. That is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed, and please drink your water, eat at least two meals a day, and take care of yourself. I know this can be a stressful time, so yeah, just know that I love you, and I will see you next time, and thank you for a thousand subscribers. <laughs> Alright!